So we have a very special guest joining us on Republic TV this morning. Her name is Mary Milliben and she's an American singer. Mary, good morning. And, good morning, Naran. Uh, good morning. And uh, of course, the headline in India is the CAA. And there was a very unusual tweet of support that came in from outside of India. Mary is in Arizona, America this morning. And she tweeted this morning saying, CAA is a pathway towards peace. She said, this is a pathway towards peace. It's a true act of democracy. She also said, as a Christian woman of faith and global advocate for religious freedom, I applaud the Modi-led government announcing today the implementation of the Citizenship Amendment Act, now granting Indian nationality to persecuted non-Muslim migrants, Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists, and Parsis from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. She also went on to thank the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, and the government for what she called compassionate leadership, and most importantly, for upholding religious freedom in welcoming those persecuted. Mary, uh, why did you tweet that? Well, first, good morning to you and hello to all the Republic TV family. You know, I tell you, it's a very important time in the country to speak truth to power, as I say. And I tell you, as India is experiencing, the United States is experiencing, many countries across the world are experiencing certainly a re-election. Uh, and so these are times where it's important for uh, truth to be magnified and, and the important issues of, of the important issues that are affecting the world to be discussed. And certainly religious freedom uh, is one of the most important issues affecting the world. Uh, India is experiencing that, certainly the United States and areas across the world. And so uh, I have followed certainly this conversation uh, between mm -hmm. administrations here in the United States as it relates to uh, the Citizenship Amendment Act. Uh, mm -hmm. And what is important uh, in the context of democracies, you know, democracies are the beacon of hope, the beacon of freedom to the world. The United States and India, the two largest and oldest democracies together, uh, we collectively are the beacon of hope and freedom to the world. And so I think this is a really important step. Uh, certainly people can say, well, you know, the prime minister was making it in light of the, the timing of the re-election, and that could be the case. But I think it's more important that the yeah. prime minister, the home minister, and the Indian government are setting a tone for what is going forward as the prime minister approaches a third term. I think that really is the more important energy. And so to have this as an important step, uh, embracing the third term of the prime minister, setting a precedent for what India will be as it relates to uh, welcoming those who have been persecuted because of religion, I think it's very important. I think it's a smart, strategic, uh, very compassionate and bold move by the prime minister and the Indian government. How do you think the world will look at this uh, move by the Indian government? America, you're sitting well, in America. How does how will the American government, for example, look at it? Well, you know, it, uh, our our government certainly, um, regardless of politics or party, the government should look at this as a positive step. Uh, again, the United States and India as democracies collectively in relationship, we are the beacon of hope, the beacon of freedom to the world. And so, it's my hope yeah. that uh, the United States looks at this move, a strategic move by the prime minister as a positive move. Uh, we are seeing the rise of religious persecution all across the world. And, yes. and no one no one should be persecuted because of their faith, the God that they want to serve. And I say that as a Christian woman, you know, I say that living in America where we, we are grateful certainly for religious freedom. And so I hope that the, the president, I certainly hope that the, the current administration and those coming uh, in after November, who, whoever that will be, uh, will look to this as a positive move for who we who we say we are as a democracy. That's America, that's India, and that's democracies across the world. Yeah. Mary, uh, you know, this is specifically to the persecuted minorities from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And I've even seen a recent report uh, from the US Home Department that spoke about how religious minorities are persecuted in Pakistan and Afghanistan. There's a report, of course, we've reported it extensively. We don't need any proof, but it's a fact that uh, Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Parsis, Jains, any minority for that matter in Pakistan or Bangladesh or Afghanistan, they're targeted. Uh, from a humanitarian perspective, uh, you know, what's your take on it? And how do you look at it as, 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 as just a, a citizen of the world? Sure. Thank you for asking that. You know, Narajan, 
we are all God's children. You know, we are we are one human race. You know, that that motto that was shared in the G20 summit held in India, you know, one earth, one family, one future. When you look at the world as one family, when you look at the world as as one human race, uh, then even with the difference of religion, there should be a compassion. There should be a sensitivity to how those uh, who are being persecuted persecuted because of their faith are being treated. So we cannot turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to the evils of persecution across the board, but specifically religious persecution. Yes. And we all have to be accountable. You know, we have to keep our leaders accountable when we see the rise of religious persecution, whether within our countries or outside of our borders. We have a responsibility uh, as, as one family to be good neighbors and to take care of each other. And so I think it's very important that uh, the world uh, joins forces with the prime minister, the home minister, India, in this, uh, this charge to fight against religious persecution, to stand uh, as a country that welcomes those who are persecuted and to make it known that, that we're one yeah. family and we care about each other. And yeah. Uh you know, in India, of course, for political reasons, uh, you have the opposition uh, calling it anti-Muslim, for example. There are many parties that call it that. And it's a domestic issue that we will deal with. But my question to you is also from the prism of uh, those countries that essentially don't like the Modi government. Let me, for example, give you an, uh, a headline from uh, the Al Jazeera today, which, uh, which read and it said, India implements anti-Muslim citizenship law weeks before elections. Now, there's a spin, right? Of course, the Western media has uh, a bias towards the Indian government. Uh, what do you make of such headlines and such uh, Western media narrative that is spinning a humanitarian approach as anti-Muslim, for example? Sure. Thanks for the question. Well, personally, you know, it's not new news to us. I live in America and we, I deal with the Western media every day. We all do. And so yes. uh, many times, you know, the media in totality likes to put their own spin on truth uh, as a way to persuade voters or persuade uh, people against the truth. And so in this regard, I will say, look, uh, there's nothing anti-Muslim about what the prime minister and the Indian government have done. If anything, they've taken a bold step and one of the first of many countries who should uh, in welcoming those who are persecuted. And I would just say to the Western media or those media outlets that want to try to spin a headline because they're anti-Modi, the truth is Prime Minister Modi is going to win a third term and everyone should just get on the bus, get on board because the prime minister will be reelected. He is going to be the next prime minister and he is setting the right tone for what needs to happen across the world for religious persecution. Uh, it is my hope that certainly the current president, uh, it's no secret who I'm supporting in the November election. And I'm quite certain if pri if, the, if President Trump is reelected, uh, mm -hmm. who was a, a strong leader for religious freedom uh, during his four years in office. But it's my hope that the current president, the next president, and those leaders across the world uh, follow suit with what Prime Minister Modi has done in the context of welcoming those who have been persecuted because of their faith. So, you know, to the media, yeah. they can spend whatever they like, but the truth will set everybody free. And we know the truth. So, yeah. You know, despite despite this narrative setting, which which is uh, of course motivated, uh, the prime minister has uh, huge support, global support. I mean, uh, yeah. you're an example. You're sitting in America. There's no reason why you should be vocal about it. You've met him a couple of times. What is it that? And and we know that he's coming back to power. I mean, that's the mood on the ground. Uh, what makes you believe in him and his leadership? Well, you know, now that I have met the prime minister and had uh, some brief time with him, uh, I'm, a, I'm a great admirer of the prime minister. He certainly, as you know, he's a man of the people because uh, he's one of the people. His humble beginnings and the rise of his leadership certainly uh, in India speaks for itself. Uh, but he's the right leader for the right time. I think that's very important when you assess what's happening in the world. Certainly the United States, India, we are our countries that are so important to the stability, the economic stability um, of the world. And so uh, I think that you have to just appreciate uh, the timing. Uh, and so I just believe, you know, Prime Minister Modi is the right leader at the right time in India and the right time in the world. And, you know, 
again, I, I know that uh, there's opposition always, you know, in, in, in any country or government. But I think what's important is you have to appreciate and identify uh, the right leaders for the right timing for the people that you serve. And Prime Minister Modi, hands down, is the right leader for the Indian people uh, at this time and going forward. And, and that has, that that's irrefutable. You can see the policy that the prime minister has put forward that is certainly advancing India as an economic power, that's advancing India as a competitor in technology, that's advancing India as a promoter of women and young girls, uh, that's advancing India in infrastructure. You certainly, the, the headlines and, and the news about uh, the advancements in highways and, and certainly infrastructure yes. there. So I could go on and on and on, but the truth and the facts, the agenda, the policies speak for itself. And that that's irrefutable. And so, again, you know, I'm pretty bold about this because I see what's happening in the world in my capacity as an artist. And I I believe that we should get behind leaders for the right time. And, and Prime Minister Modi, he's the right leader for the right time. Very interesting uh, perspective uh, from someone who's living in America. Uh, Mary, thank you for speaking to Republic TV today. It's good talking to you. It's great talking to you. Thanks for having me. Have a good day.